Wow. Thank you so wow. much. You know, you're a human, amazing human being and an amazing uh, stock picker. It is a total so think, pleasure you know, and you delight. Know, uh, concept. Uh, guys welcome to the next episode of fantastic talks and today is a very special day for us uh, because for the talks we have now crossed 1 million views so which is about 10 lakh views thank you everyone uh, for the great support and the fact that people have been watching it enjoying it and people have been sharing it uh, with their friends and family and i get so many comments and so many responses so which is uh, you know very heartening and great and also today is a landmark talk that it's our 30th talk so that that's also a beautiful event and recently we also celebrated mothers day so you know so i when i was uh, thinking about it i was thinking about you know financial planning for women that you know why why should men have all the money why should men control all the money and why do women even most of the working women today are not controlling their investments and portfolio so this is a very very big uh, thing that everybody must look at and they must understand how to be financially independent and financially savvy and we have created a program called fantastic uh, uh, a program for women from the fintech woman and uh, i would highly recommend all those women out there today who are watching the talk or all the husbands who are watching and would want their wives or their sisters or their daughters to do it please ask them to do the fantastic women's program so they understand how to manage money how to control money and how to make money from money there is a beautiful book i would like uh, everybody to read it's by a lady called jennifer barrett it's called think like a breadwinner so it's it's made uh, you know it it basically symbolizes so it can be read by men and women both that what does it mean to be a breadwinner how do you think like a breadwinner what are the opportunities what are the challenges what are the things that you need to be keeping in your mind uh, to be uh, thinking like a breadwinner so it is a very important uh, book and it will teach you a lot about financial responsibility financial awareness so i think it must be a part of it and also please know that you know financial planning or wealth creation starts by wealth protection so i would highly recommend to everyone who has not done it that please have the best health insurance buy a super top up plan do a review of your health insurance must have a life insurance so must have your basics protected and even your home should be insured we have seen how you know how sudden calamities can come from nowhere and uh, like recently gurgaon there was a building collapse where you know couple of floors collapsed but the whole uh, you know there are so many buildings which are now non occupiable because of the uh, you know the lack of the quality or the other challenges and people have lost the total worth of their lifetime savings or investments because the apartments were worth 2 3 crores 4 crores so imagine that kind of loss that has been suffered by people which could have been avoided if they had the right insurance so guys you must learn that you know wealth creation starts with wealth protection and all of you must have that i am very pleased to have uh, with me g pradeep kumar today you know from union bank of india mutual fund i know a lot of you would not have heard of it but uh, last year they were amongst the top 10 fastest growing mutual fund their assets have gone up drastically to about 8000 crores he himself is an im amdabad alum and a btech from university of calcutta calicut so it's my great pleasure on the 30th episode to uh, invite g pradeep kumar ceo of union bank of india mutual fund thank you sanjeev good evening to everybody thank you for having me on the show no no pradeep it's great to have you so as they say that you are one of the most uh, well kept secrets of the industry <laughs> <laughs> and i wish that more people get to know about you and how uh, you know aggressive smart you are and what kind of performance union bank of india mutual fund has uh, shown and it's great uh, to know that story also that you you were the employee number 1 
and how over the last uh, 11 12 years you have built up this uh, unit and what are the challenges around that so pradeep before we get into it can we know a little bit about yourself about your schooling your education your parents where do you come from and how did you end up reaching where you have reached us sure um sanjeev and uh, th- thanks for asking that because that's not uh, something that you know we normally end up uh, uh, you know talking about um see i have i have very very ordinary background i would say and um, personally i have been i have been thinking that i am a kind of destiny's child if you can if you can call it that um i i grew up in um, villages in in kerala different uh, parts of kerala i studied in uh, you know vernacular medium schools um so it was not i can't say that it was my childhood ambition to uh, study at iim ahmedabad and uh, you know join the financial services industry and head a company etc i didn't i didn't start with those ambitions so but things happened right um I, that's why i would say that i am a i'm a destiny's child and i have generally believed that um, if you do what you have to do today properly uh, tomorrow will happen it will take care of itself so i have been i have been very fortunate that um, i had i had a good set of parents i had good set of teachers who who imbibed the right values uh, encourage me to be ambitious um you know try for bigger things in life uh, so that is how you know i ended up doing engineering and um, then uh, you know i i realized very quickly that uh, you know in spite of scoring decent marks i realized i am not going to make a great engineer uh, so i i moved on and decided to do mba uh, was very lucky to get into iim ahmedabad and uh, like i said it's it's not like you know i planned for it um from where you know i came from uh, very few people you know end up doing that so i was i was lucky but it happened and um uh, i think you know one big um, factor uh, that influenced my career in terms of external environment was that i passed out in 1991 and 1991 obviously you know you all know what what an important year it was as well as the indian economy and uh, you know the whole market is concerned so which is what allowed me um, an opportunity in the um, financial services industry especially in the mutual fund industry see uti which was obviously a, a premier and uh, largest institution at that point of time came to the campus for recruitment for the first time um, so we were lucky you know that uti came and and uh, that was a time when you know we didn't really know much about um, uti or fund management industry anything in fact it was a friend of mine uh, when i was hesitant to appear for um, the interview of uti it was a it was a friend of mine who told me that you know pradeep you should do this because uh, this industry is going to grow and you know in 20 years time you will you will be one of the very few people who will be experts in the industry and uh, you know there won't be many people who know as much as you if you actually spend 20 years from now in this industry so that is how i ended up joining uti in 1991 which was uh, not which would not have been a uh, regular choice for uh, people passing out uh, from iims those days so again uh, i was lucky it was a growing industry a lot of changes happening in the market economy i got excellent opportunities within that organization again lucky to have very good bosses who gave me all the opportunities and then the other big change was when uti you know uti was the first uh, fund management company to have offshore funds raise money from international investors so when they wanted to open an office in uh, london i was again very lucky to be chosen for that right oh, wow. so i got an opportunity to work in uh, london for 7 uh, years so i was sent on a three year assignment but then destiny is such that um, i ended up spending seven years so you know had had excellent um, exposure in fact you know i if my memory serves me right we met briefly uh, while i was in london you won't remember i think you came to sell the millennium bonds to london <laughs> yeah, yeah i was uh, part of the investment banking 
team at that yeah. time so. <laughs> so so again i was i was quite lucky and then um, i came back uh, you know had good opportunities here and this opportunity came in 2010 um, i worked in idfc also in between four and a half years again terrific opportunity every opportunity has been uh, learning and uh, this is one thing which i have always believed in my my life uh, sanjeev that you keep learning every day every interaction uh, more than reading books or anything i try to learn from the people i meet so whenever i meet anybody you know it doesn't matter junior senior from any field i always believe that there is something that i can learn from this person so uh, that is one thing which has helped me all through in my life and yeah i think god has been kind i think that's amazing you know there's a one of my i really like this book called heroes and what i really liked about it it's about this story of these nine heroes and everybody has a power and then there's a ninth hero who doesn't seem to have any power theek okay? and and you know that's the whole uh, you know uh, confusion about that how is he a superhero if he doesn't have any power but then later on you realize his power is to be able to absorb the powers of others <laughs> so you must know, so at the end of the day he can learn and have the super powers of eight superheroes and he is the biggest hero and this is a story that my father used to tell me and this is what you said pradeep i truly invite it like you know we have a culture at bajaj capital that where whether we meet in the morning afternoon or even night we say good morning we don't say good morning good evening good night the reason okay. for that is that i used to have this office boy working for me and even if i called him at 11 o'clock night and you know i was having a meeting i would call him he would come into the room and say good morning sir i say yeah raat ho gayi hai you don't have to it's good night he say nahi yeah. sir jab aapne mujhe bulaya hai i have to be uh, at my best whether it is morning evening afternoon so the that's the whole culture we invite from that that look whenever we are there and whenever we are talking to our client or we are talking we he deserves the best so whether it yes. is morning evening or night so it always has to be good morning always has to be full energy when we meet anybody if we are too tired then let's not meet but if you are meeting we have to do justice to that person's time so i think it comes from that and pradeep also i think a very inspirational story that you know coming from a small town studying in vernacular you could have never imagined okay, you know you would have reached here and uh, and let me say that you know i what i've realized is ki hamari jo financial services industry hai is actually a you know a chain breaker let me say it has changed so many people's lives like uh, last time i did mr ramdev agarwal you know even his uh, background and the roots he started with and uh, that he could have never imagined reaching the way where he has reached and there are so many other examples so it is such an inspirational industry to be in and one Absolutely. thing i really liked about like about this industry is that you know there are so many people who can get well paid here baki industries are like pyramid as you go on top very few people are well paid whereas in financial services there is so many people who are very well paid and pradeep we have got uh, we have a regular viewer called madhusudan and he's given you a very good compliment very articulate and very majestic so your oh, voice wow. is mine <laughs> thank you nine that's very good of him and guys i will request everybody to just keep uh, putting in your comments we are able to see them and please put in your questions so that uh, we can take them so pradeep uh, before the people start asking their questions i need to ask you what is happening in the market here yeah? you know every day i see my portfolios down you know ghar pe baithe baithe we are losing so much money so what is happening in the market where do you see it going what are the challenges and uh, you know what's happening in the us market that uh, you know i i read somebody's uh, quote that you know the uh, the nasdaq falls by 3% every day you know and and <laughs> so uh, so yeah i think i think um, sanjeev we all we all know that at least people like us who have been around in the market know that um, you know this is not the first time there has been turmoil in the market and this is not the last time okay and uh, it is it is um, you know opportunities or situations like this that um, really separate the men from the boys 
See, I have I have told on many occasions that uh, if everybody was smart and everybody was a, a long term patient investor, probably there would be no market, right? market is there because people have different views and there are different types of uh, investors or traders in the market because for every trade for every buyer there is a seller on the other side so it is not that you know market is full of buyers or only full of sellers there are there are both parties right so um having said that what we are seeing now is probably one of the one of the most uh, difficult times for the markets both uh, uh equity and for bonds and i would say across asset classes because you know fueled by the easy liquidity which uh, central banks provided across the world particularly in us asset prices went through the roof um you know and and of course there were many investors or um, i would difficult to call them investors in that sense but people who started getting into the stock market um, in the last two years since um, you know the covid uh, hit us and the markets so far have been on a one way street so the bull markets always you know give a false sense of uh, uh, you know inflated opinion of themselves to people they think that you know in a bull market yeah i am i am great i am making money uh, whatever i buy it's all going up i am making money because of my skill no people mistake um, uh, you know chance for skill right there have been a lot of people and it's all been triggered by the easy liquidity cheap money right it it encourages people to take risks um, interest rates were low so there was no point in going into fixed income so everybody came into equity now that is changing obviously too much money you know finally leads to inflation and inflation has become a big problem now and central banks can no longer ignore inflation so rbi tried uh, until the last moment um, as we all know but even rbi realized that um, you know they couldn't hold it anymore so which is why uh, inflation has become a bigger concern than growth today for all central banks so which is why um, us and uh, europe uh, britain um, and uh, finally in india central banks have started raising interest rates now this is going to definitely have a negative impact on asset prices because the idea of raising interest rates as um, you know most of us know is to uh, destroy demand or at least moderate demand and then bring down prices okay so that is really in the short term not great news for the market or the economy um and you are definitely going to have uh, difficulty on the on the bond markets also we have already seen that so we are going to have um, difficult times both in equity and bond markets in the near term now for the last one year or so we at union mutual fund we have been maintaining a stance that compared to the underlying fair value of the market at nifty level the market is at a significant premium so what does that mean see we don't go by purely the pe or the eps growth etc we calculate individual stock uh, fair value and then we calculate the nifty level fair value now you know compared to the fair value the market was expensive so we have been telling people that you know be careful uh, either you know come into uh, funds like balanced advantage funds which offer you decent returns decent equity exposure but with significantly lower volatility or if you are if you are a real long term investor with 5 year 10 year horizon no problem come into equity but spread your investments to you know stps over 6 months etc and uh, but obviously you know market continue to go up which again proves a old uh, saying that you know markets can remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent but finally you know events which could have happened any time in the last last 3 to 6 months have started happening now which is tightening of interest rates so i think we are going to have volatile equity and bond markets for some time but having said that that is a short term phenomenon right we are very very optimistic about um, the uh, prospect of the equity market we think there will be a very healthy uh, growth of indian economy and over a 5 year time frame and anything upwards of 3 years i would say 3 to 5 year time frame we can expect 
good growth, healthy growth of um, Indian economy as well as uh, the equity market. And long term investors, I think, you know, should continue to invest into this volatility in a in a staggered manner, because we have really no concern at all about the long term prospects of the equity market. I think market will be fine. Economy will be fine. Uh, but as um, you know, uh, Morgan Housel uh, said in his book, see, volatility is the price you pay for the extra returns from the equity market. Now, you have to be willing to pay that price. You cannot say that I want the I want the um, you know steadiness of a bank deposit and the superior returns of the equity market. It's not going to happen, right? So if you want the superior returns of equity markets, be prepared to ride out this volatility, and um, you know the the remaining I mean the next few months I think may give may give excellent buying opportunities uh, for people who want to put lump sum investments. But otherwise, hybrid funds such as balanced advantage funds are great at any point of time. Yeah. So, Pradeep, uh, you know, this uh, turmoil or this correction that is happening, last couple of times, the corrections have been very, very short. Like even when the corona pandemic came, you know, there was a sharp decline in the market, but it rebounded equally quickly. And, uh, you know, technically, if you look at it, there was no reason for it to rebound because we were still in a very uncertain phase that, you know, lockdowns were there. None of us could have imagined that we would be in our houses for two, three months and, you know, people would be confined. You know, this was almost unimaginable. You know, six months before, if you had read a science fiction movie, you would have said, what, what a shit movie. I can't believe this is ever going to happen. But that truly happened. And even despite that, the markets bounce back. But today it's very different. It's actually the interest rates are going up. Liquidity is being pulled back. And, uh, you know, and it is happening all over. So do you think this correction is going to last a bit longer? Or this correction uh, you feel is, uh, you know, how long do you think this correction will last? And second question that I'm sure is going to be there on minds of a lot of the viewers is that is this the time for them to sell their equity funds and move the money into a balance advantage fund or do they just sit tight and uh, wait for the markets to go back up the last question is very easy to answer uh Sanjeevji. okay um i'm i'm yet to come across an investor um who has been you know who has made uh, money or created long-term wealth by um, reacting to short-term events Okay, uh, doesn't happen. Almost every successful investor that I know, uh, they have actually, you know, uh, stayed through the volatility. They have been patient. And the worst thing that you can do is, you know, sell when there is a correction in the market. Right now, how long the correction will last is a difficult question to answer, to be honest. I'll, I'll give you some perspective on this. Now, when COVID hit us in uh, March uh, 2020, right? The market corrected sharply, as, as we all know, and the Bloomberg uh, consensus estimate was that there would be an EPS uh, uh, slowdown of something like, I think, 30% or 32% uh, or so, right? But in our calculation, the loss in fair value was about 9%. So we clearly reached the conclusion that uh, compared to the fair value, the market was probably at a 20 to 25% discount. And we gave a strong call that, you know, this is a screaming buy the market at that, that stage. So to reflect that, in our balance advantage fund, uh, we, we increase the equity allocation from 50% to 80%, which is the maximum allowed. So we, we took a very aggressive stance at that point of time and, and maintained that for uh, some time, as long as the market was at a, at a discount. Now, did we know that the market will run up so sharply? We had no clue, to be honest. But we knew that was a great time to buy and the money that we made in the last, uh, say, two years or uh, so, normal case, we would have expected to make that money over, you know, three, four years or so, right? But it so happened that, you know, so much of money came into the market and, and uh, driven primarily by liquidity, as I said earlier, the market ran up. Now, similarly, we have a correction now, the reverse situation, and uh, we believe that the market is at a, at a premium. Um, at a moderate premium to the fair value. Now, how long will it take uh, to ride out this correction? 
honestly we don't know it can be a matter of few months it can be a year or two years difficult to say but one thing which we are very clear um, and i would strongly encourage you know everybody who is watching this is to say that please don't sell your equity in a correction if you can buy more please do but but don't sell that's the worst thing to do nobody creates wealth see to make money in the market first and foremost you have to be invested in the market nobody makes money by watching the market i think that's a comment of uh, or that's the dialogue of the day pradeep nobody makes money by being on the sidelines so you can never win a race or you can't lose a race if you're on the sideline and life is not fun without winning or losing even if you lose you at least ran the race okay yes. if you win then you win the race so guys please don't be on the sidelines the people who have been waiting for to get into the market it's actually an amazing time to get into the market in fact uh, one of the big questions i am getting from lot of my customers and lot of people who invest through bajaj capital is that pradeep lot of people now want to invest in the international markets because they feel netflix and the technology stocks are uh, very well priced now than they were compared to others but due to this the restrictions from rbi people are not able to buy them and they are not very comfortable going and opening a stock broking account and buying it through that route so what's the way for these guys to buy these international funds and do you think that uh, cap thing that has happened do you think that will get solved anytime soon i think um, you know that uh, cap issue will be resolved uh, sooner or later it's a matter of time i would have expected that to be sorted out uh, already but unfortunately it's taking some time perhaps a blessing in disguise right given the given the way the market uh, went okay but now i also would like to set the context you know for uh, this international investments see i am i am a votary of uh, people uh, investing in these uh, international funds and international markets but i believe it has to be for the right reason now i would not advocate investing in uh, international funds for the reason that you know i believe us market will do better than indian markets god knows that's not the reason right the reason i think it should be that you know if you have got reasonably good exposure to indian market already it's a good idea for you to diversify and for diversification international markets offer a very good opportunity you are minimizing your risk but for heaven's sake please don't go there thinking that you know us will do better than india may or may not happen we don't know okay but from a diversification point of view it's a it's a good idea to take some exposure to international markets and uh, i think you know this this um, limit issue will get uh, resolved uh, very soon i'm pretty confident yeah so i i fully agree with you you know for me the logic behind investing in the international markets is that today we have global companies like apple is doing business in india and it's taking away such a huge share of indian mobile market or same is same is with samsung or same is with netflix and you know even amazon so why should we not have a stake in those companies if we feel those companies are going to be the future winners and uh, that's where i truly feel that today a mutual fund should actually be building a global portfolio but the, no i and obviously because we have also have to understand india is a very high growth market so uh, you know let me clarify this to everyone that india is what is going to give you the returns and even last two years the international markets have downperformed but that has been because of the fact that these markets had outperformed the us market at least 7 8 years last 10 years was amazing gave fantastic returns but in the long run those are not sustainable when any market gives very good returns for 7 8 years then there is bound to be years of low growth or there is bound to be years of correction and we have been seeing that uh, you know these corrections have been very far and few in between so that uh, opportunity is definitely going to be there in the indian market to uh, you know give a better return and just this, this is something simply i can say to everybody guys don't be on the sideline if you are confused invest in a balanced advantage fund take exactly. that the most you know i you know i take it from uh, nimish bhai you know he 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 made this comment to me if whenever you are confused about the market invest in balanced advantage fund 
and that has Absolutely. actually got stuck in my mind. So yeah, it's an all season fund. It's an all season fund. So whenever you don't know what to do with the portfolio, invest in that. But yes. uh, this is truly actually a good time to invest in the equity markets also. And at yes. least I am actually converting a lot of my debt money into equity now uh, through systematic transfer and I am increasing. And this is called the rebalancing. So a lot of people yes. say, yeah, how do I buy and sell? It's a simple thing called rebalancing. Yeah, please decide 70, 30. I want to be 70% equity or 70% debt and 30% equity. And when either of these are out of sync, just rebalance. And that's how you are, you know, booking profits. You are moving the money into the right. And it makes a lot of difference in your returns. So it's a very simple thing. Also, uh, Pratik, we must take a question. Like uh, there's a question by one of the regular viewers. His name is Jitender Kumar Sachdeva. He's asking, what's the update? What's the take on debt funds? We see NAV of these funds going down in the past few weeks. Obviously, that's because the uh, the interest rates have gone up. So what would you like to tell people about debt funds and how do they tackle this in this environment where people have been finding debt funds to be even more volatile than uh, than equity funds? Yeah, um, you know, that's that's a that's a, a very, very good and very relevant uh, question, I would say, in, in uh, today's uh, situation. See, um, firstly, I, I'd like to make a couple of observations about, you know, debt funds in, in general, right? One is people have this that, um, you know, debt funds are safer, you know, equity is risky. And I think over the, at least over the last two years uh, or three years, we have seen that there is risk in debt funds also. Uh, there was always risk. You know, the interest rate risk was always there. And now we have experienced, you know, the credit risk also, right? So um, that's a reality. The second uh, important thing that I have observed in the market is that while debt, debt market itself is uh, in general more complicated in my view than equity market, the knowledge level across the market of, of debt funds is uh, relatively poor, right? About equity market, you you call anybody on the street and they would probably give you some gyan about, you know, PE or EPS or, you know, PEG or something like that. You ask them about debt funds, there is, you know, very little conversation happening, right? So that is one fact about debt funds in general. But yeah, in today's situation, when the rates have risen already, and there is expectation that there would be further rate hikes from RBI. Uh, I think it's going to be a difficult time for uh, debt funds in general, particularly funds which have high duration, you know, which have invested in more in uh, longer duration papers. They are going to be more volatile. So investors would be better off uh, coming to lower duration funds. So. Uh, a good balance in my view would be something like good corporate bond funds which have decent accrual which can compensate for uh, any potential mark to market losses on account of interest rate hike otherwise if you don't want to take even that chance stick to funds with uh, even lower duration right um, of money market funds or uh, even you know liquid funds uh, for people who have less than one year horizon, arbitrage funds, although technically they are uh, equity funds, but they are they work more like debt funds with equity taxation. They offer a good opportunity. This is not the time to be adventurous on debt funds, in my view. It is going to be a, a more volatile market than equity market, right? So you need to be very, very careful as far as debt investments are concerned. Play safe. And one more advice um, I would like to give is that, see, in equity funds, we generally tell people that, you know, please do not over diversify. Don't go and buy too many funds with similar objective because you will end up buying effectively. You will own a very large number of stocks, which will be effectively the market itself. And your returns at your portfolio level will be below market. OK, but at the same time, in a debt fund, I normally advise people to diversify aggressively and aggressively across fund houses so that at an individual investor's portfolio level, the exposure to any one particular security becomes very low, right? 
uh, and to achieve that you should you should ideally invest across fund houses so diversification is a very good idea in the case of debt funds for an investor but for equity funds over diversification will only bring down your returns without any material uh, upside many very well put uh, pradeep so just uh, answering the question simply yes it's very cautious to be in the debt funds and you have to be very careful about what is the type of debt fund you are in if you are in a long term debt fund or a fund which is holding then it may make sense for you to move your money to either the short term debt funds or arbitrage funds also there is a category called target maturity funds that uh, you should look at and uh, you know these are the funds what they do is that they are targeting a uh, securities with maybe a 2023 24 maturity so there the volatility since the maturity is not too long then the volatility will be slightly lower pradeep would you want to explain target maturity funds and do you, any of your funds follow that philosophy or model yeah uh, we do not have a target maturity funds but effectively what the what the target maturity funds do is that you know they buy um papers of a of a certain maturity to to match the maturity of the fund itself so in simple words it's like an open ended fmp right so um in a in a normal fmp you don't have an option to uh, exit or you know buy new units apart um, apart from the secondary market in a target maturity fund uh, fund managers normally you know buy and hold uh, to that definite maturity but the investors have the option of exiting in between if they feel like if they think they have made enough money they can you know exit that option is there uh, the only thing i would uh, caution investors you know i think i think as a as a concept it's a very good concept uh, only thing i would caution investors is that please do look at the liquidity of the underlying portfolios because uh, the debt market in india is generally illiquid compared to the equity markets so uh, if you get stuck in a fund with poor liquidity um, god forbid if if some situation arises and if there is too much redemption the fund may face difficulties so go for funds which have more liquid portfolios and uh, i'm sure uh, you know the the excellent uh, team at uh, bajaj capital can advise investors about you know which are the good funds yeah in fact uh, you know very honestly we have more research people working on uh, debt funds than we have working on equity funds because you know man supervising what an equity fund manager do is doing is much more easier than what a debt fund manager is doing and also guys i'll request the team to put a qr code we have launched new portfolio reports what we call our edge portfolio reports they are free for everyone So even if you don't maintain your portfolio through Bajaj Capital or you do it direct, they are the most advanced portfolio reports, which take you into your debt holding or your equity holding, and that's what we use to do our own analysis. So we have actually brought it for the first time to the public, and Pradeep, we just won the award from Money Control CNBC TV 18 for the most innovative, and transformative company, and one of the reason was the uh, was the reports that we have come out with. these type of reports have never been available so team please do put out the link for people to be able to scan and create their own edge report and see the quality of the securities they are holding but yes uh, guys you, for debt funds you need a advisor more <laughs> than you would even need for uh, anything else and there is a qr code on your top right you can scan that it will take you it's absolutely free there is no you know nothing there wherever you just have to upload your cash or common account statement and you will get a very detailed view of your portfolio so please do take the, that and do that so pradeep before we take our next question there is a question by mr kumar he's put a comment so that uh, you know they are because see please understand bajaj capital has a few thousand people selling and there sometimes some people may make wrong commitments but we as a company are highly committed so if you feel there is a wrong commitment please ask us we'll refund your money and especially if it's an insurance there is a thing called free look period yes even if you have bought your insurance for the 45 days post that 
you can just say that i don't want that insurance without any conditions it will be refunded to you and please remember see we are very clear why we are into existence we want to make people's life better why do i like my work because my work is about you know making money when people my clients make money or people make money and i say we are blessed you know they are professions where they make money when people are in misery we make money when people are making money so we are blessed to be in wealth management and when, even when you buy the worst insurance okay i'm saying you will still get 4 5 6% return which is equal to debt but you are getting a life cover for your family you buy a mobile phone after one year it's not going to have a value or you go and have food you know next day it's going to be gone and you would have spent that 3000 rupees so you know so if somebody is trying to sell you an insurance and you don't like it just take your money back yeah point is rather than being complaining about it or being angry about it <laughs> it that doesn't but please understand that they are trying to make your and your family's life more secure so uh, uh now uh, there is also you know i don't know whether we can take that question or not pradeep people are asking about access that uh, you know i don't know whether uh, uh, but uh, let me say that there are very strong controls in the mutual fund industry and you don't have to bother about that and you know things get blown up more out of proportion so would you like to add a little bit there yes i i i can you know make make some remarks although i don't want to specifically talk about uh, axis it's a it's a company you know that i i respect immensely i know people all of us yeah i think they are a fantastic fund yeah but but i think you know um, sanjeev we we have to look at this in proper perspective right in you see we live in a world where there are you know um, i would say bad elements bad apples in every field right that doesn't make the industry bad you know there are there are unscrupulous doctors does it mean that medical profession is completely useless there are so many you know um, uh, frauds happening in the banking sector does it mean that you know you don't place your deposits with banks so you know in the society itself you have undesirable elements you have criminals does it mean that you know the whole society is bad so i think people need to have some perspective on this the good thing about mutual fund industry and this is what should give confidence to people is that the inbuilt safeguards and surveillance mechanisms within the company and uh, at the regulators level are so strong that incidents like this if at all something untoward happened they are picked up by the system and there is action taken immediately that should give confidence to the investor about the robustness of our regulatory framework and about the controls within the company itself right in another era another company things like this might have gone completely unnoticed but today our systems are developed our surveillance systems are robust our regulator is very um, you know prompt in taking action and which is why today yeah something happened and we are able to find out and take action so i don't think you know there is anything to worry from an uh, investor's perspective industry is very well regulated access mutual fund itself is a very well managed company so i don't think you know there is anything to worry yeah i think that's very well answered uh, uh pradeep also now uh, this is a question by mr shambhavi and i think we have already mr or miss sorry i can't see the picture so sham so shambhavi uh, the question is that we have already answered this question that the value has gone gone down by 20% uh, so what should she do so shambhavi Uh, pradeep has already answered it and we have also answered it a little bit like uh, people you know money is made in the stock market because somebody is making money and another person is losing money so somebody is selling and another person is buying and you never know what is the right time to do but when the market's already corrected and you are if you can hold on for the long run you will lose money if you sell but if you stay on you may have a good chance of recovering and even making good money and this is actually a time for you to even actually put in more money from debt as we this you do your portfolio rebalancing move money from debt into equity because markets are correcting so pradeep would you like to add some things here yes um i i entirely agree with uh, what you said um uh, sanjeev ji and um, i would like to add that you know um <clears throat> it's it's important to 
stay invested and uh, uh, please don't try to find the perfect opportunity and the right time to invest i'll i'll give you one example right um, march of 2020 we launched our um, mid cap fund nfo and when we launched it the market had started falling already and our approach is that you know we don't try to time the market we launch an nfo when the money is available to invest the first day within one or two days we invest all the money we don't try to time the market at that time a lot of people called us and said you know please don't do this this time because the market is falling wait 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 you'll get better opportunity etc is going to tank we said nothing doing this is a process and we won't deviate from the process as it turned out can you imagine the first day when we had money available to invest was 23rd march now can you can you think about a better day to put your money in the market now if we did not follow our process and we try to be smarter than the market and try to time the market our investors would have missed that opportunity now that was a great day to invest the market invest in the market how many people would have had the courage and conviction to go and invest money that day so my point is when the time is great one you may not have the money two you may not have the courage and conviction so please don't try to get into that game about what is a good time to invest i would say the best time to invest is when you have the money and the time to sell is when you need the money and when you need to invest there is always a good product a suitable product which meets your requirements it can be a BAF, it can be a pure equity fund, it can be, you know, a debt fund, whatever. There is always a product which will meet your requirement. So, Pradeep, also tell us a little bit about uh, Union Bank of India schemes. What are your flagship schemes? Which schemes have performed the best? What has been your USP? I'm sure a lot of, uh, you know, today we have more than 25,000 viewers watching us live. So, yeah. I mean, there are a lot of them who are interested no. Understanding uh, thank you all well. uh, again for for patiently watching this. Um, a quick um, you know update, um, a background about us um, uh, for all the viewers is that see we are jointly sponsored by Union Bank of India and uh, Daichi Life of uh, Japan, which is one of the largest uh, insurance companies in Japan, also active on the asset management side. So. Um, we have, uh, you know, uh, schemes across 18 schemes across uh, equity, debt and uh, hybrid. Now, we are a highly process driven organization. So it is process over people. We don't really depend too much on the individual brilliance of a fund manager because that can be like the form of a batsman in cricket. Right. It may work someday. It may not work another day. We are looking to produce consistent returns. Consistently above average is what we aim for. If we manage to do that, our belief is that over a period of time, we will be in the top quartile consistently. But at the moment, consistently above average is what we are trying to achieve. And that is what we have tried, what we have managed to achieve also by and large. Now, um, you know, one, one important thing is that we don't have a flagship fund, right? Um, there are, there are um, companies which do that. But our philosophy is that every fund is important and we have a process and we manage every fund in a true to label manner so i'll i'll tell you why we do it that way and why it's important to do it that way so um for example say our flexicap fund is doing extremely well okay now when the flexicap fund is doing extremely well if our small cap fund is not doing well in the small cap category right flexicap fund is doing well in the flexicap category now, is it of any consolation to the investor in small cap fund that my flexi cap is doing well, right? She doesn't care, right? The investor in small cap is only worried about the performance of the small cap fund. So we give equal importance to every fund of ours. And our goal is that in each category, our fund should be consistently above average. So for somebody who comes into our BAF, you know, somebody who wants a BAF, our BAF should be a good product to offer. If you want a mid-cap fund, union mid-cap should be a good mid-cap fund. So that is the way we, we look at it. And, um, you know, fortunately for us, the process that we have put in place about four years back with uh, Vinay Pahadia joining us uh, has worked um, like magic for us. Fund performance has been, you know, consistently good. And we have been true to the label. So, for example, what do we mean true to label? So 
in a large cap fund, for example, SEBI only stipulates that you should have minimum 80% in large cap stocks. The remaining 20% can be anywhere else. Similarly, in a, in a small cap fund, you know, you need to have, I think, only 65% minimum in small cap and the rest can be anywhere. You will not find any large cap stock in our small cap fund. And you will not find a small cap stock in our large cap fund either. So point is, if you want small cap exposure, yeah, we have a very good small cap fund. You want a large cap exposure, we have a very good large cap fund. You want everything, we have a flexi cap fund. But, you know, we won't convert every fund into a quasi flexi cap fund. So we have, we have been, you know, with all humility, I can say that we have been successful in our own, you know, humble way. Um, and we take every investor seriously. So maybe because, you know, I, my own background of uh, growing up um, in, in, you know, uh, small villages, etc. I know how important or how difficult it is for a person to save even 5,000 rupees. So for somebody who gives 5,000 rupees to us, that 5,000 is precious. It is as precious to that person as it as you know, five crores maybe to a bigger investor. So we don't take a view that somebody who, who gives us more money is a is a more important investor and somebody who giving 2000 rupees is a lesser investor. We take every investor equally importantly. And one of the one of the dreams that I had, you know, when I joined this industry also uh, and I, I developed this over a period of time. See, how can we as an industry, what is the contribution we are making to the society? Right? What difference do we make? I think, you know, the wealth creation and as a result, the change in quality of life for people is the biggest difference that we are making. See, uh, I've, I've given this example. Uh, if I may take two minutes, you know, so you do, to tell you this story, it's, it's my favorite story, actually. Um, I, had a, I had a driver, you know, uh, a few years back. And uh, once, you know, when he asked for uh, the, the hike, annual hike, I told him, Instead of giving you cash, I'll start an SIP for you. He is a fourth fourth standard dropout. I have no idea what is an SIP. He said, share bazaar hai? I said, yes. Aap kar rahe? I said, yes. He said, kije. So I started a thousand rupee SIP in, in one of the mutual fund schemes. That time, union mutual fund was not there. Um, and his luck was such that, you know, in about 26 months, the 26,000 rupees that was invested became, you know, some 46,000 rupees. Fantastic timing. He once checked what is the value. I told him the value. He wanted to take that money. He redeemed everything, put it as a down payment for a car, and he bought his own taxi. Of course, he left my job. That's a downside. But, but you know, his life changed after that. Right? He became owner of one car. Then he bought another car. So 1,000 rupee SIP, if it can make so much difference to the quality of life of one fourth standard dropout driver, imagine what we can achieve in the society if we do this properly. So I think, you know, we have, we have a, a bigger role to play in the society. It is, it is not about, um, you know, gathering assets and increasing AUM. I think we all have a fiduciary responsibility. We are in a great position to do something good for people around us. Yeah, in fact, uh, Pradeep, there's a similar story I have from um, one of my drivers. I had made him start a SIP about 15, 20 years back. Another day, he was sharing with me that SIP, the, you know, I think it was 2,000 rupees or 3,000 rupees. Later on, he increased it to 3,000 rupees. That SIP has paid for his children's education. So, you know, children have, it has paid for their marriages. And wow. he's saying that, and that same SIP, will pay for his retirement. So although we have to also understand that his needs are lesser. Yes. So maybe at 3000 rupees, SIP is able to give him all that. It may yes. not be able to give us this thing. But this is the power of systematic investing. There's a beautiful, I see my team using a 15, 15, 15, this thing. And uh, you know, a lot of people don't know is that make your children Lakhpati or make your children Karolpati was a, was a concept launched by Bajaj Capital. In fact, uh, people don't know that uh, we were the first company to launch the concept of SIP even before the mutual funds came out and we used to yes. recommend people to buy direct equity every month in the that. mutual stocks. So point is, guys, uh, there are so many people who have become crorepatis investing through Bajaj Capital just through SIPs. So SIP is a very, very powerful tool. 
today if you put 15000 rupees for 15 years and you are able lucky enough to get a 15% return whereas the market has given about a 17 18% return in the last 15 years uh, even if you get a 15% return which is slightly high expectation but it will become a crore and you know and this money will just keep doubling every 5 years so 5 to 6 years so there is a huge opportunity out there just don't be on the sidelines start investing we are now coming uh, towards the end uh, pradeep one question if you have 1 crore today where would you put your own money how would you you know if i was to ask you this question where would you put this money today i would i would probably uh, split this equally this is purely based on you know my uh, goals and my uh, my age and my risk appetite but i would put um, half of that in a in a flexi cap fund and half of that in a bath okay now that's super when there's a question i think shambhavi was asking a follow up question see but we don't talk about direct equities but see whenever the market is very volatile what happens is that there is more correction on the small caps and mid caps than there is in the large caps so the money moves towards large cap but you may be and but then when the when it will bounce back small caps and mid caps will give you better returns so today if you want to get into the market it is uh, i think opportunity is better uh, today safer to be in the larger caps uh, because they are they'll be more stable uh, or you can even choose flexi caps where the fund manager is making taking those choice yes uh, they're making that choice for you and you're letting him take that call and that's what you are paying his fees for is that where he's taking a call that how much but uh, but you also have to see how well and how active the uh, the multi cap is managed and uh, whether uh, that is uh, you know how that is going and uh, and let me also say that look by being a you know don't trade on your portfolio but be intelligent Of talks like this it will be highly beneficial for you because those small changes in your portfolio can add 2 3% without being drastic and that additional 2 3% over 15 years can mean almost more than double the amount of money that you will create so there is a lot of uh, opportunity out there and uh, uh, so that that's uh, my point So Mukul, thank you. Mukul has uh, congratulated Bajaj Capital for excellent services. Thank you, Mukul. It makes us proud. I know we are not perfect. Everybody has a bad day, but uh, our intention is never bad, and we are always there. And uh, just uh, if anybody has a bad day, please tell us. We will correct it. But our intention will always be there to help uh, people. so uh, and pradeep finally uh, you know i wanted to ask you this question that uh, you know there is a lot of people talking about multi cap and flexi cap theek okay? hai so if you can explain it to the viewers what's the difference between the two and which one is a better opportunity right now okay <clears throat> good question so uh, flexi cap is a is a category where um, the there is no restriction on the fund manager as to uh, how much uh, she can invest in large mid or small cap you know it can in 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 theory it can be 100% large cap 100% mid cap etc and any allocation it's up to the uh, fund manager right while in a multi cap 25% has to be in um, small cap 25% has to be in mid cap 25% in large cap and and the rest uh, the fund manager has the freedom so the basic difference if you ask me is that in a multi cap fund 25% exposure uh, to mid cap and 25% exposure to small cap are assured right and the, and the remaining is is free uh, to the fund manager to invest while in a flexi cap fund it's possible that um, exposure to mid and uh, small cap may be smaller depending on the on the discretion of the fund manager now which is good and which is you know not good is is a difficult question okay i would tell you my personal preference 
I would always uh, go for a flexi cap fund. The reason is that, see, we, we invest in a, a fund, you know, because we trust the fund manager to manage our money. Now, if we trust the fund manager, let us give him the freedom, right? There is no point in saying that, you know, yeah, you are, you are good in managing money, but then I want you to put minimum 25% in mid cap, 25% in uh, small cap, etc. I think it's, it's really not, not the best option, but you know, people who are more comfortable that way, yeah, they can go for a multi-cap fund, nothing wrong in it. But my personal preference is, is flexi cap, but <coughs> sorry. Um, I would, I'd like to make one, one general, uh, point, you see, um, this search for the best scheme, the best fund house, etc., is futile, right? We all have seen enough analysis has been done, which shows that funds, which have given excellent returns in the past or the top performers are seldom the top performers in future. You look for consistent performers. That is what is required right you look for the rahul dravids of the market okay that is what is going to uh, give you long term wealth now in any scheme let us accept that bulk of the returns 80% or 90% of the returns are given by the market right only the remaining 10 to 20% is the value addition of the fund manager now most important thing i will again reiterate is stay invested if you stay invested any fund house any scheme will give you decent returns right x may give two percent extra y may give two percent less that's always possible we don't know who is going to be the best performer in future the important thing is invest and stay invested but you can always make informed choices right you should not be reckless you should choose schemes um which are suitable for your goals and your risk profile and that is why i always say that take the help of a distributor or advisor retail investors i think i think it's it's a big folly to try to do it directly i personally use you know uh, advisors or you know distributors as they are called today i would encourage every retail investor that please you know take the help of a, a distributor or an advisor before you invest don't try for the cheapest option in the market. The cheapest is hardly ever the best option for you, right? If you keep, you know, buying antibiotic directly from the pharmacy and taking it, it's only going to get you into trouble one day and the trouble can be big trouble. Better pay a small fee to the doctor. Yeah, and also if you have a 10,000 or even a 10 lakh rupee corpus, <laughs> you pay that 0. 0.6, 0.7% extra for a distributor. You are paying six, seven thousand rupees. Imagine, and you have, you know, Indians are the king of vasuli. So, apne apni vasuli nikalo agar if you are paying the money, but it's better to have that convenience. Do have somebody running around for you. Have somebody bringing research for you, and it's always better to have that advisor there, there and, with and you. Important thing, you know, um, uh, Sanjeevji, is that the value of an advisor you will realize when times are bad. See, in good yeah. times, everybody is a king. You don't need any help. But bad times always happen in the market. It's a cycle. And in bad times, you need somebody to hold your hand. Otherwise, you will land in trouble. And that is why you need people like Bajaj Capital or any good advisor to hold your hand and guide you. Thank you. Very well put, Pradeep. And thank you for taking out time and being with us today. It was absolutely fantastic. It was so great to get to know you. And uh, you remember, you. you reminded me of the times when we were trying to recover the Indian economy and the Indian millennium deposits and yes. other times. And how things change, how, you know, from that time to this time. And it's such a proud to be a part of this nation. So thank you, thank everyone, you. for joining us. Please keep coming back. And uh, we look, keep, uh, you know, we hope that we are able to add value and help you make money. Thank you, thank everyone. You. Thank you, Sanjeevji. Thank you for having me on the show. And thank you, all the audience. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.